So there was so much surrounding the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial from the attack on new media coverage, LawTube in particular, how this fits into the ever-changing landscape of media to some people thinking this was a waste of time. And of course, elitist claims and uh, always the fallout and subsequent media press tour by many parties involved. Now, on top of sharing all those thoughts relative to those aspects right now, later I will share some eerie timing related to Johnny Depp and the conclusion of this trial. But first, I want to share a little bit of background related to this trial and my thoughts. So first, I was not initially interested in this case, but as more news and some of the quirks made headlines as the trial settled in, and of course, once Johnny and Amber took the stand, I was all in, and boy was I glad I jumped in because what a circus of entertainment this became. A lot of it having to do with how it was covered by mostly new media, commentating over the courtroom live feed. Now, two legal commentators I enjoy watching are pictured here, and one is a fellow Nick, Nick Riqueda of Riqueda Law, and then the other is Emily D. Baker, who is a less politically edgy but more pop culture-focused legal commentator. And the main attack from legacy media, if you will, on LawTube and new media and independent media in particular, and... I'm going to refer to this old media as old legacy mainstream establishment, whatever you want to call it. But that press was about how these online personalities made bank basically during the trial, mostly from the super chat feature, which is a way to donate to your favorite creator as a source of income separate from traditional advertiser focused revenues. And of course, no one is batting an eye at establishment news outlets who have been profiting on things like this for decades at a much larger scale. But to me, the simple explanation to this is that new media be, is a threat to establishment strongholds on the narrative seen traditionally by the majority of audiences up to very recently. Now, this trial exposed their vulnerability simply by there being another option for people like you and me to choose other than them. And I think legacy media realizes now, possibly too late, they cannot compete in a fair, truly open, competitive, free market and them attacking new media not falling in line to the established narrative in this case of anti johnny depp because he's the man and pro amber Heard because she's the woman in this post me too era all that means is that i think they're losing the battle for eyeballs now this battle exposed the lie of the narrative up to that point of trial and as the trial went on was actually the catalyst for me beginning to pay attention and even as kind of a male pop culture lover, I was growing tired of this narrative of man bad, woman good. And as I kept watching, the narrative fell apart even more in favor of Johnny. Firsthand, I was watching this, plus the legacy media gearing up to try to discredit new media and the scale at which it was all taking place. I couldn't help but see how monumental for media this is. Seeing similarities to the way Michael Jackson's death in 2009 was was covered, which I think ushered in a new era of media then where an, an entertainment news paparazzi site company, TMZ, was actually the first to break that story years ago, resulting in actually Twitter crashing from this huge event, getting everyone talking, and now almost 15 years later, we see this trial mostly covered online. And this also affirms something I talked about last year with James Charles being this new kind of troubled Disney star in this new media era. And I think we have officially crossed over and come out of the other side of another transition from legacy media to new media. But to all of those of you thinking this was just a distraction and unimportant and a waste of time relative to everything going on in America and around the world, whether that be inflation or gas prices or bodily autonomy rights or self-defense rights, crimes, elections, you name it, I hear you, and I think those things are important. But while the coverage of this trial may have started out as a welcomed distraction for many, it ended up backfiring, I think, because the result of this trial has become very important as a turning point for truth and trust in the American justice system on a worldwide stage. And it's also a win for the wrongly accused. It gives a voice to abused men and men accused wrongly of abuse to speak out and seek justice of their own. And it's also a win on the culture war front because it involved a very influential celebrity crossing multiple generations of fandom, which will impact politics, which is downstream from culture. Now on the 
sporting analogy side, the trial had a very much whose side are you on, who are you rooting for aspect. And especially with the teams of lawyers, in particular the female lawyers, Amber having Elaine Bredehoff, who's pictured on the right-hand side, and Johnny having Camille Vasquez here on the left. One thing I want to highlight is talk about Amber's attorneys being from a higher-ranked law school than Johnny's. Well, it ended up not mattering because Johnny won, even though many said before the trial it was very unlikely he would. And this showed to me when it comes to a face-to-face, in-the-battlefield square-off, competence and truth in practice can overcome just about anything. And it also supports the idea that poor behavior will catch up to you at some point once someone finally holds you accountable. In this case, it happened to be on a worldwide stage under the spotlight in the court of law. But now let's go to some of the fallout and post-trial media tours. First with Elaine, one of Amber's attorneys, went on the morning show, CBS This Morning, in particular where it was just hours after the verdict, and she clearly had a set narrative to run with, but she did get some pushback in interviews, especially on CBS, where she didn't seem to have prepared for this pushback. That really isn't surprising considering she didn't seem prepared during the trial either. And I've seen some say that this was a mistake for the lawyers to speak out and not have a PR team do it for Amber considering she lost the case. But maybe this was Elaine trying to do her own damage control to help her reputation. But unfortunately, I don't think it worked. Now, the same way it didn't work, the same way Amber's interview with NBC didn't work. And I don't think anything from any team at this point is going to change public opinion, especially for Amber who still comes across as fake and disingenuous and pretty much repeating the now proven defamation, which I'm going to give more thoughts on that in the future videos with lessons learned, but there is talk she could actually get in more trouble for continuing to stick to her claims that have now been proven defamatory by a jury. Another interesting media piece related to my earlier comments about giving a voice to the wrongly wrongfully accused or defamed is a case that talked about late 2021, the Kyle Rittenhouse case, And he actually appeared on Fox News' Tucker Carlson tonight, right after this Johnny Depp verdict came in, saying this gives him more confidence to go after people in the media legally for their false claims against him before he was found not guilty. And now the final point on this for now is the eerie coincidence of closing arguments for the trial, where of course the court of public opinion was definitely in Johnny Depp's favor, being the same day the nighttime show... Nighttime spectacular show Fantasmic returned to Disneyland in California with Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow still in the show after some people questioned if Johnny losing his Disney partnership after all these allegations came out years ago would end the pirate's presence in the parks or at least change it for good. But it was clear that the crowd loved this and cheered for Johnny when Captain Jack Sparrow appeared. So hopefully Disney sees this and reverses course on their Johnny partnership. The timing was just something I could not ignore and I just needed to point out because you just you can't make this kind of stuff up. Like I said before, I still have many things to say going forward, but until then, make sure to share what you think in the comment section. Thank you for joining me for this news live chat segment taken from the full broadcast. Make sure to click around the channel for more. Thank you so much for having me in your online life and I will see you next time.